Hello oh, and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at form of business organization. And this topic is covered in introduction to corporate finance as well as CPA BEC section. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn. YouTube is where I have all my lectures, 1,500 accounting, audit and tax, as well as finance lectures. I have a lot of finance lectures. If you're a finance student, make sure to check my website. This is my website. On my website, you can find additional resources. Please check my website. If you're interested, you'll have access to additional resources. Also, if you're looking for a study buddy, if you're studying for your CPA or CFA, you can check out studypal.co. It's an artificial intelligence driven study buddy platform that match you with another individual. They have users in 85 countries and 2,800 cities in the US from LA to New York. So let's go ahead and take a look at the form of business organization so as as a business how can you operate how can you operate so well we're going to look at the different type different form then we will look at the disadvantages and disadvantages for each type of business starting with sole proprietorship now once you hear the word sole hopefully you know sole means one so sole proprietorship is basically a business that's owned only by one individual it's a business owned by one person this is the simplest type of business you don't need to file any paperwork any individual could be a sole proprietorship depending where you live you might be able to start by doing little or more than getting a business license and sometimes no business license whatsoever if if you don't need a license to operate that business so obviously for this reason there are many 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 type of so, uh, small business that are considered sole proprietorship. Sole proprietorship keeps all the profit. Okay. The bad news is they have unlimited liability. So if you if you open a deli or a restaurant or any type of a business, what happened if you are sued? If it's a sole proprietorship, the business and you are the same individual. This means the creditors can look beyond business assets, also the creditors, and also if you are being sued also they can sue you personally so if you owe money if the business owe money you owe money personally the business is not separate the good news is all the income is taxed once taxed on their personal level so when the company makes a profit revenue minus expenses you know ten thousand one hundred thousand in revenues um, forty thousand of expenses you made a profit of sixty thousand this profit goes to the owner and the owner pay taxes on that money. Let's just say, I don't know, whatever, 20%. Okay, I'm just making this number up and they'll have to pay the taxes. So the, the money is only taxed once. So the life of a sole proprietorship is limited to the owner's lifespan. This is a disadvantage because once the owner passes away, the business is really gone. And the amount of equity can, can, can be raised is limited to the amount of proprietary's personal wealth and connection. So how much money can we raise? Well, how much money can I chip in or how much money I can borrow from other people. Okay. This limitation often means that the business is unable to exploit new opportunities because you may not have enough money. So that's the disadvantage. Okay. The ownership of propri uh, sole proprietorship business can be difficult, especially if the owner is the also the manager. So if you own manage the business, it's going to be difficult to difficult to uh, difficult to trans uh, transfer. So this is one type of business, which is sole proprietorship. The other type of business, it's very similar to sole very similar to sole proprietorship but it's called partnership well here's what i want you to think think of a partnership as multi sole proprietorship for simplicity but we will emphasize so it's similar it's similar let me just take this one out it's similar to proprietorship except there are two or more partners now it's similar but not really okay if we have a general partnership something called general partnership all partners share in gain and losses proportionally to their ownership so if you own 10 percent you'll get 10 percent if you own 30 30 and they all have unlimited liability for all partnership debt not just uh, some particular share so if even if you own 10 percent and you're a general partner you're responsible for everything the way partnership gain and losses are divided is described in a partnership agreement the agreement can be informal oral um, just let's start a, a loan loan business okay or a lengthy written document by a lawyer so to start a partnership agreement you just have the as long as you have the intention the mind uh, and uh, because this is what the court's going to go by if you have no written agreement but you guys are working together two individuals are working together they're sharing the profit guess what you have a partnership okay it doesn't have to be in writing now this is what we're talking about general partnership limited partnership again 
one or more general partners will run the business and have unlimited liability. So in a general partnership, all general, all the partners are general and they're all responsible for everything. If you have a limited partnership, well, you need at least one general partner, one GP. Why? Because if you have a partnership, you need at least one individual responsible for everything. And that individual is the general partner. Okay, and you need it. Otherwise, you cannot have a limited partnership. But there will be one or more limited partner who will not actively participate in the business. Now, the limited partners, they don't make a decision. They, they basically invest the money. So simply put, let's assume we have an LP, a limited partner, and a general partner. Why would we have those type of organization? The general partner is with someone with an idea. Someone with an idea, but no money. They, they need money. So they'll go to a limited partner, someone with money, and they would say, well, I have this great idea. I just need money and we could both make money. The limited partner would say, look, I have the money, but I have no clue what your business is. Um, I can give you some money, but I, I don't want to have unlimited liability. They, then they will agree to form a limited partnership, LP and, and GP. What happens is if the business goes down, if the limited partner can only lose whatever he or she invested, the general partner is, has unlimited liability. So the limited partner has limited liability, but they have no saying in the business, okay? The advantages and disadvantages of a partnership, they're basically like the sole proprietorship, okay? Partnership based on relatively informal agreement and easy and expensive forms. General partners have unlimited liability for the partnership debt and the partnership terminate when the general partner wishes to sell out or dies. All income is taxed once to the partner, just like you remember the 10, the 100,000 minus the 40,000 example, and we said we have a profit of 60,000. Well, if we have two partners and each one get 30K, they'll have to pay taxes on that money. Okay, so the money is only taxed once, just like, again, sole proprietorship. Okay? Because a partner is a general partnership can be held, because a partner in a general partnership can be held responsible for all partnership debt. Have an agreement is important, especially if you want a limited partnership, you have to have agreement. If it's a general partnership, you don't need to have an agreement. But for a limited, we need to know who is the limited partner and who's the general partner. Failure to spell out the rights and duties frequently leads to misunderstanding later on. And many, many problems happen between partners in the real world, okay? Although they might have a written agreement that still part uh, partnership is I, I don't like partnership. That's that's a personal preference. Only if you are a limited partner, you must not become deeply involved in the business unless you are willing to assume the obligation. You have to be very careful if you are a limited partner. If you keep making decision and the business go down, the general partner might say, it's you who I'm going to blame. And if you're standing in court and the judge determined that, guess what? You were making all of this business decision. Your status could be changed from limited to a general. But again, this is something that the, that the court will have to decide upon. But simply put, if you're a general partner, you are responsible for everything. You make the decision. If you're a limited partner, sometimes limited partner, they take the word silent. Silent means don't make decision. Otherwise, you get yourself into trouble. Okay? So simply put, if we want to summarize, uh, the primary disadvantage of a sole proprietorship and a partnership is unlimited liability. They're responsible for everything, especially for the business debt, limited life of the business, and the difficulty of transferring ownership. Though the three disadvantages add up to a single central problem, the ability of such businesses to grow, which is if you have if you have a problem like this, then you, you can grow, okay? So, especially if you want to raise money. Now, what, what do you want to do if you want to raise money and have more people involved? You will form a corporation. So that's the third line of business we're going to look at is corporations. Let's take a look at what is a corporation and advantages and disadvantages of such a business. Okay. So corporation and it's coming corporation coming from the word corpus. Corpus Latin is for body. So corpus. Corpus is a body. Body means it's a person. The corporation is a person as far um, corpus, it's like, uh, you know, a corpus, a body. So uh, as far as the law is concerned, the corporation is, is a person, okay? It's the most important form in terms of size of business. A corporation is a legal person. It's a separate and distinct from its owners, and it has many rights and duties and privileges, okay? It's just like an actual person as far as the law is concerned. Corporation can borrow money, 
own property can sue and be sued and can enter into a contract. So when you enter into a contract with a corporation, it's like entering a contract with a person as far as the law is concerned. A corporation can even be a general partner or a limited partner in a partnership. So also a corporation can invest money with another partner. So you'll be a partner with a corporation, whether it's a limited partner or a, a general partner. And the corporation obviously can own stocks in another corporation. So if the corporation have extra money, and that's, that's mostly true in all corporation, what they do is they take some of that money and they invest in another company. In another company, it's called an investment, okay? They, so Apple might buy stocks in Amazon or they might buy stocks in Home Depot or PepsiCo or whatever, okay? So starting a corporation is somewhat more complicated and more challenging, but it's not really that complicated uh, than, a small, than, than a small sole proprietorship or a partner business, partnership business. Former a corporation involved preparing articles of incorporation and set a set of bylaws. Okay. The articles, they must contain a number of things, including the corporate name, its intended life, the business purpose, the number of shares that can be issued. Okay. This information must, must be normally supplied to the state, so corporations are born in a state. For most legal purposes, the corporation is a resident of that state. So in most corporations, most corporations incorporate in, in the U.S. in Delaware because they don't have state income tax. Not sales tax, they don't have sales tax, but no state income tax. The bylaws are the rules describing how the corporation regulate its existence. So who's responsible for what, how do we vote for the board of directors, so on and so forth. The bylaws describe how the directors are elected, maybe a simple statement of a few rules and procedure, it may be quite extensive for a large corporations. And the bylaws can be amended, can be changed or extended from time to time, by who? By the stockholders, by the owners. If the owners decided to change a rule, they will vote on it and that will be that. In large corporations, the stockholders and the manager are usually separate group. And this is going to create a problem, which we're going to talk about in a moment. The stockholders elect the board of directors who then select the managers. Managers are charged for running the business on a day-to-day -day basis. So in principle, the stockholders to control the corporation. Remember when we looked at that chart in the prior session, I said stockholders are on the top, but they would vote for the board of directors. As a result of the separation of ownership, the corporate form has several disadvantages. Okay, Ownership can be readily transferable. This is an advantage. And the life of the corporation is therefore not limited. Think of Steve Jobs. When Steve Jobs passed away, the founder of Apple, Apple did not close. They did not close their door. They kept on going. The corporation borrows money in its own name. As a result, the stockholder and the corporation have limited liability. And this is why... People like to invest in corporation because they are not responsible. They are not responsible for the corporate debt. Simply put, they are limited to their, the money that they invest. So the most that they can lose is the money that they invested. Also, the relative ease of transferring ownership. So if you own stocks, you can easily sell them, transfer them, give them to your kids, inherit them, give them to someone. It's very easy. Okay? If a corporation needs new equity, it can sell new shares of stocks to attract a new investor. So if the corporation needs money, they can go ahead and sell stocks and get money. Apple is an example, okay? The company was a pioneer in the personal computer business. As demand for its product exploded, it had to convert to the corporate form of organization to raise more money. Now, the number of owners can be huge. For example, large corporations that have many thousands or even millions of stockholders. For example, GE, General Electric, had 4 million stockholders, different stockholders, and about 10.1 billion shares. So many, many people owns GE, uh, 4 million different people. And the more shares you have relative to the others, the more power you have in a corporation. So those are the three four of corporations. Now, bear in mind, we have C corporation and we have S corporation in the real world. What we talked about here is C, C as in Charlie. S corporations are a little bit different, are little bit different they are dealt with in an attacks an attacks course as corporation just know they are more like a partnership and a corporation but that's all you need to know now for corporation just to give you an international outlook when you see the word ag for example bayrick motor and work i don't know how to pronounce this it's bmw if you see the word ag it means this is a german company okay it means this is a corporation it's a german corporation um if you just see the name like this then it's a limited liability company. PLC, this is for United Kingdom. It means it's a public limited company. Um, again, if you see LT, Shell, LTD, it's a corporation. It's a UK corporation. NV, Unilever NV, this is 
Dutch or Netherlands or Holland company. It's a joint stock company, NV. Fiat, the, the car company, SPA, that's an Italian company. SPA is a joint company stocks. And Volvo AB, that's AB, it's, you know, CAB, it's a Sweden company. It's a joint stock company. And Peugeot, SA, that's French, that's a joint stock company. Just going to give you a, a pres an international perspective about if you saw a name of a company and you saw those letters, so you know this is not a U.S. company and something else. In the U.S., it's Inc., Inc., you know, and yes, it's Inc. So basically, this is an overview. Um, if you have any questions, any comments, please email me. But if you want additional lectures and additional exercises about this, please visit my website, farhatlectures.com. And if you'd like to have access to the additional material, please consider subscribing. It's one price for everything. It's a buffet. Good luck.